Hello friends and welcome. Today is Saturday, June 18th. And uh, I was supposed to be fishing right now, but uh, got up this morning and uh, just said I'm not fishing today. Uh, just just wanted that extra hour of sleep instead. So uh, here it is Saturday morning. I was actually going to do this out in the backyard. And uh, just as I pressed play and got ready to say hello, uh, the neighbor started mowing their lawn. So. You know, it's uh, it's just my luck, <laughs> and I'm glad that they're getting their their lawn mowed uh, early today, so that they can enjoy the rest of their day. So I moved back down to the to the basement here, and uh, thought I'd spend a few minutes just uh, catching up and saying hi. And uh, today I am smoking my little uh, Edwards. Um, I call these bent billiards. I, I guess that's what they are. This is actually a very small pipe, but it's uh, it's nice. It's uh, ideal for, uh, you know, quick smoke or uh, trying new things out as well. Uh, and this, if you remember, this is the, blend, uh, the pipe that I uh, had a ghosting issue with and uh, showed you how, how I cleared that up with, uh, with salt treatment and it's been smoking great. And I am smoking today some, uh, a gift from, from Clan Lightfoot. Um, these are a couple of blends that he, uh, he put together himself. Uh, the one I'm smoking today, and this is actually the first bowl that I've had of it, I'm about halfway through, uh, is a blend that he calls Tobald's Leaf. And this is a, it's a, it's a, it's a Virginia Perique blend, but he also puts some, uh, some Dark Fired Kentucky into it. And it's, uh, so far, very nice, Ronnie. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, he also sent me a, a, a lot of Kia blend, uh, as well to try out. And I'm really excited about these. If you haven't seen, uh, Clan Lightfoot's uh, video on on um, how he made the um, the plug of the vapor. It's it's really interesting, and I'll I'll, I'll link to that for you. Uh, but uh, he's a great guy, uh, and uh, from what I can tell so far, half a bowl in, uh, Ronnie, you uh, you blend some great tobacco. So I'm really enjoying it, and I will uh, I'll, I'll get back to you with some detailed notes on on the blend. I'm not going to make a video on that because uh, very few people are going to have the chance to try it right now. So. Uh, but I need to relight, and uh, Amy, if you're watching, <laughs> you know, no fan. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm teasing Amy. She was having some uh, some difficulty with matches the other day, uh, and what I noticed, and I don't know if this is a common thing or not. I, if you notice when I lit that, what I've just always instinctively done is once the match is lit, I tip it like this and allow the flame to catch onto the wood. If you tip it like this, all of the energy, you know, that you're getting from that chemical reaction at the tip. Is moving upward because heat rises and it's going to take a lot more for the wood to actually be able to, to catch fire and for that match to continue burning. So that match is not going to burn for as long as it would as you can see. I'll sacrifice one more for the sake of YouTube knowledge. So I tip it like this, and now that the wood is burning, you'll get a much longer burn on this, and you know be able to more effectively light your pipe. And you see, as soon as I tipped it this way, it it, it stopped because you know the, the flames, the heat's rising, and uh, it's therefore less likely to go down into the wood. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And of course, buildings can burn from the top down, so you know it's not that I'm revealing some deep uh, constant law of the universe. It just, I find tipping the match now at the beginning helps it burn. Um, but Amy fixed her problem in, in other ways. She uh, She's more technically advanced than I am. So, what I wanted to talk about a little bit today was uh, over-the-counter blends. So, uh, you know, I've talked a lot about Carter Hall. Uh, I promise not to make another Carter Hall video right now. Yeah, there we go. I'm having my own difficulties keeping things lit today. And 
And I, I did that uh, box opening the other day from uh, Arts and Clouds with the Sugar Barrel, which is another now lost over-the-counter plan. And I've, I've talked about others, and others have talked about others. And I, and I was thinking about, um, you know, why I smoke them and, and how I got into to, to first uh, smoking the over-the-counters. And it, it's kind of a, I thought it was kind of an interesting journey. So, you might remember from one of my previous videos, I've talked about my time in when I lived in Pittsburgh, and, and that's where I really think I, I became a, a pipe smoker. You know, I had, I had uh, dabbled a little bit before that, but that's where I found um, what we'll call real tobacco blends, you know, the actual tobacconists and uh, blends that were made, uh, a, a better quality blend than, than the over-the-counters, uh, and I, I mean that with all due respect to the over-the-counters. Uh, it's where I discovered uh, English blends, and uh, you know, up until that point, I had been smoking almost exclusively uh, Captain Black White Label, and you know, it 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 was the first pipe tobacco I I tried, and I liked it, and I stuck with it. Uh, I I tried a few others over, the, and this this lasted about maybe two years. Uh, I had a friend who was also a pipe smoker who exclusively smoked Borkum Riff, and to this day. Uh, smokes nothing but Barkham Riff, and I tried Barkham Riff because, you know, he offered, and uh, I thought it was horrible, and I'm sure it's, it's you know, for people to like Barkham Riff, there's nothing wrong with it, it just doesn't agree with, with my palate, and I didn't know how he could smoke it, and, and I have since, and I think I've mentioned this, I've since gone back and tried Captain Black, and I don't know how I could have smoked it. Again, it's, there's nothing wrong with it, it just doesn't agree with me now. So, when I, I started to uh, visit a tobacconist, and this was the Continental Pipe Shop in uh, a town called Squirrel Hill in Pittsburgh, or just outside of Pittsburgh. I learned about all these you know, New English blends and started smoking uh, Number 10 Downing Street. Discovered the Dunhill tin tobaccos, uh, Bengal slices. Um, I think uh, it was shortly after that, maybe about a year after I started on that journey, that I found Penzance and, and uh, you know, en enjoyed that. I, I think that's right. Uh, I might have the time a little off there, but so anyway, I had moved away from the the drugstore blends at that point, uh, and the. Where I, when I did most of my pipe smoking was in the, the late evening, actually sometimes in the early morning, because I would work very late at the university, and then I lived, um, I don't know, it was about an hour walk, I, I'd say it was somewhere between one and two miles, uh, and often I left work after the buses had stopped running, or I just felt like a walk, and so that walk home in the evening was when I would do most of my pipe smoking. Now the problem was, if I was at the university, Sorry, my, my inability to keep this lit is no reflection on the tobacco. It's because I'm talking and not puffing. If I was at the university and I happened to not have any tobacco, I had to walk for about a half an hour before I got to the pipe shop. And very often I was working so late that the pipe shop was closed anyway. So it was not infrequently that I would find myself with the prospect of an hour-long walk and nothing to, to smoke. And the drugstore, where I had previously bought my Captain Black, was you know, two blocks from, from where I was working at the university. And they still had a full aisle of tobacco and, and Grabo pipes and all that. So this was at a time when uh, you still would expect to find drugstore blends in a drugstore. But I guess there are still some drugstores that sell them, but... It was literally a full aisle with nothing but you know, cigars. Uh, you could buy boxes of like White Owl cigars, um, various pouch tobaccos, uh, the large cans of Carter Hall and Sir Walter Raleigh and things like that, uh, and 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 the pipes, pipe cleaners, pipe filters. It was it was wonderful. 
uh, even little check tools and, and uh, I can remember the check tools in these like plastic wrapped to cardboard packaging hanging up on the thing and of course lighters and, and things yeah, Zippo flints and, and fluids they might have even sold Zippos so occasionally I would or actually more frequently <laughs> than I'd like I would wind up having to go to the drugstore to pick up a pouch of tobacco and at this point I had turned my back on Captain Black didn't mean that to rhyme and uh, I was not going to touch Borkum Riff and, and any of the aromatic blends for the most part I had taken off the table because I quite frankly was being a snob uh, but there was this whole you know uh, collection of what I would call um, non-aromatic tobacco so uh, and 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 that of course is false because a lot of them had toppings but I didn't know that at the time and, and Carter Hall was one of the ones in in that collection and, and you know, Prince Albert half and half uh, uh, velvet uh, sale I believe sale uh, uh, anyway there, there was a quite a variety of them and then quite a variety of things like uh, apple and cherry and uh, Borkum riffs and the you know various uh, Captain Blacks and, and, and so on. Um, but about half of the tobaccos, there were things that I hadn't tried that I considered non-aromatics. and So I would pick one and try it. And I, I smoked through most of the offerings that they had. And, you know, that's where... And, you know, at the time, keep in mind, I was not um, really at all uh, well off. I, I was living on a graduate student stipend and had very little income to spend on tobaccos. So when I bought a pouch of tobacco, I smoked it until it was gone. and I didn't buy anything else until it was gone, uh, with a couple of rare exceptions. And, you know, I learned that uh, half and half was not something I liked. It uh, just didn't appeal to me for whatever reason. Prince Albert and Carter Hall were things that I thought were very good, and, uh, and I enjoyed them and bought them more than once. And a lot of the others, like the Sir Walter Raleigh, um, I'm trying to remember, there were three or four other sort of burly based blends in that, in that genre. Uh, they wound up somewhere in the middle, and uh, I didn't revisit any of those. You know, I pretty much stuck to Carter Hall until maybe about four years ago. I just for fun went and ordered all of the over-the-counter burleys that, that I could find. Uh, just little, you know, one, two ounce samples if they were available in that way, or pouches otherwise. Um, and, uh, and, and smoked them all side by side and realized that I was still, I still felt the same way about them. So I can still enjoy Carter Hall, Prince Albert. Uh, I still don't like half and half. And all of the others were, you know, somewhere in the middle. They were okay, but they weren't things that I would necessarily want to stock up on. Um, now, the exceptions to my I have to smoke it until it's gone rule are interesting uh, because one of those exceptions, well, let me give you the obvious one first. I bought this, I don't know, I was probably drinking that night. I bought a pouch of apple tobacco. And I can still see this this pouch. It had a green apples. One was sliced, so you could see the seeds in it, and and it, it was a photograph. It wasn't a drawing or in any way artistically done. It was just like somebody took a photograph of some apples and smacked it on the front of this tobacco pouch. I have no idea what brand that was, um, which is good because I don't want to slander them. Uh, it was horrible. It was it was truly. It wasn't just that it was it was something that didn't agree with me. I don't know how it could have agreed with anyone. This was this was really, really bad. And that pouch sat on a shelf in my apartment for a long time. I think I actually moved it twice <laughs> before throwing it away. Um, it was it was bad. And that was one that I did not require myself to smoke before I could buy another pouch of tobacco. Um, and the other one, interestingly, was a patch of sugar barrel, which I mentioned in uh, my Arts and Clouds box opening because that's what that was all about. This is really nice stuff, Ronnie. Right? 
So the reason I didn't um, I didn't smoke the sugar barrel wasn't that I didn't like it. I actually did like it quite a bit. Um, uh, it surprised me. Uh, it was sweet, and I wasn't at that time into aromatics. I wasn't looking for something sweet, but it was, and, and it wasn't sugary sweet. It wasn't, you know, it just was. It was tobacco plus, and that made it very unique to me. Uh, it also was 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 quite good. I really liked it, but I didn't feel like it was something that I wanted to smoke all the time. You know, it wasn't something that I wanted to every night when I was walking home have a bowl of of, of sugar barrel. It was something that I wanted to have when I was in the mood for it, and that was a real luxury for me. But for quite a while I, I kept a pouch of that around and you know it wasn't a huge luxury because a pouch would have probably lasted me a couple of months and one of the great things about these over-the-counter blends is, is how resistant they are to drying out and, and I know that's because they're, they're they've got a ton of uh, propylene glycol, not propylene glycol, polyethylene glycol um, in them and and uh, you know but they're, they're you know you can you can put a pouch of Carter Hall in your car and, and six months later smoke it and it will be as if you just opened the pouch. So it's, uh, and, and that was true with, with Sugar Barrel as well, which, you know, frankly was, was probably a bit dry to start with. Um, but it, it was just a, a really nice tobacco and, and I, I enjoyed the flavoring in it, which is, is unusual for me. And if you've followed me for a while, you know that I'm not into aromatics, but I do like some tobacco. So, for example, um, uh, geez, I'm blanking on, is it plum cake? I want to get this right. I think it's plum cake. Uh, that's the one that has a lot of natural flavorings in it, and, and I like that. It's, it's, uh, I can taste them. I don't like the chemical flavorings. Uh, so when something is naturally enhanced, as I think sugar barrel is, it's a molasses uh, plus something else topping. That I, I can enjoy because I can taste the, the flavorings, uh, whereas if it's a chemical additive, if it's uh, you know one of these ester derivatives that they, they use in flavored coffees, for example, then it just doesn't do anything for me. I just taste the chemical uh, background. So anyway, that's how I, I discovered Sugar Barrel. That's uh, why I remained interested in it. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I never really viewed it as something that I needed to stock up on or, or sell or anything like that. Not that I was thinking that way back then, uh, because it was available. And uh, now that it's not available, you know, I've, I've, I've missed it. And again, I'm very grateful to uh, Arts and Clouds for the chance to, to try it again. I have smoked two bowls from the, the sample that he sent me, and it, it's, it's wonderful stuff. It's uh, to the best of my memory, it's it's what I remember. So that's really how I got started in those OTCs. Um, it wasn't, at the time, a conscious decision to do an exploration of a genre of tobacco, because uh, I wasn't thinking that way. But it was uh, desperation at needing something to help me pass the hour walk that I had. And honestly, I'm glad for it because I smoked some things that I probably never would have tried uh, otherwise. So it was an interesting, interesting experience from a, you know an interesting time that uh, unfortunately we we uh, we've lost a lot of that in in our our fever to uh, protect ourselves from ourselves. But life goes on. So that's it. I've uh, this has gone longer than I, I thought, and I apologize for that, but I hope you found some of that interesting, and I uh, hope you'll, uh, you'll uh, stay tuned, because I'm not sure what's happening the rest of this week, but I'm getting very close to uh, starting a new project video, uh, probably not this coming Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, you'll, you'll see something on that. And in the meantime, I will, uh, you know, continue to keep you updated on the weekends and stop in to say hello now and then. I uh, appreciate you uh, liking or commenting on this video. Really enjoy all of your comments. It's uh, it's great to hear from everyone, and it keeps me uh, keeps me going. And uh, I want to thank everybody that subscribed. I've uh, picked up some, uh, actually, a spate of new subscribers over the past week or two. And uh, welcome to all of you that uh, have been watching since my last welcome. 
Uh, I'm really grateful for you guys. When you subscribe, it tells me that what I'm doing is of interest, and uh, that helps me to, you know, stay motivated to do more of it. So, thank you. Welcome to the fold, and uh, I hope you enjoy what you uh, what you've signed up for. So beyond that, I hope you all take care. All you dads out there, have a great Father's Day. All you kids out there, remember your dads. And until next time, I will look forward to talking to you again very soon. Goodbye now.